Welcome to Trains 21. In addition to this YouTube channel, you can also find us online at trains21.org and trains21.com. In case you're unfamiliar with them, a rail box car is a versatile, enclosed freight car that's commonly used on North American railroads. It carries diverse freight including everything from beer and grain to appliances and pallets. Another benefit of box cars is that they can get a larger amount of goods to and from various locations quicker than trucks. The boxcar is probably the best recognized piece of railroad equipment ever put into service. Its history traces back to the earliest years when railroads realized that some freight commodities needed at least a little protection from the outside elements of Mother Nature. However, after the turn of the 20th century, the car truly became an industry icon and remained so up until about the 1960s. In 1870, the industry adopted general interchange agreements, meaning that boxcars could now go outside their home rails and onto other railroads. Since then, boxcars have gotten bigger and have transported goods all across the United States. Over time, railroads realized that more specialized cars were needed to haul unique types of freight, which led to the development of well cars, auto racks, refrigerator cars, and several other specific designs. Boxcars, however, still have their place in today's industry, especially in carrying bulky items such as auto parts. The government mandates that boxcars be removed from service when they are 50 years old, which means that about 57% of the current boxcar fleet will be retired in the next 15 years. What's more, orders for new boxcars stand at only a fraction of all new freight car orders. But new technologies, such as newer boxcars with higher freight capacities, are slowly replacing the older cars. At the same time, some older infrastructure can't handle the bigger freight cars, especially here in the Northeast. Privately owned boxcars account for 22% of the market and their boxes have an average age of 19 years. It appears that railroad companies do not foresee a need to increase their ownership or increase their orders for new boxcars in the near future. In fact, many provide incentives and reduced rates to those who use private freight cars instead of using the railroad's fleet, which is why we see fewer and fewer railroad-owned cars by the year. Fewer industries today still rely on boxcars. Products that have traditionally shipped by boxcars are now being moved on newer, more efficient freight cars. Lumber is now shipped on center beam flat cars, which can haul more product per car than a boxcar can. Plus, they're easier to load and to unload. Auto manufacturers have moved manufacturing facilities closer to suppliers, making trucks a more economical transportation choice.
The bigger downer is that railroads find boxcars less attractive than unit trains. In fact, you might remember in video T179 when I said this. And notice that turnout up yonder. That runs behind a business called Fermano's. I don't know this for certain, but I think that they either ship or receive canned goods in those boxcars. Scenes like these are disappearing in railroading as Class 1s are abandoning carload freight in favor of end-to-end -end unit trains. There is a link to that video in the description box and in the pinned comment. That is, unless David Barnett has something to say, then I have to pin his comment instead. The good news is that there are still holdouts for boxcars in America. In addition to Alco diesels, searchlight signals, and track warrant controlled freights, northeastern Pennsylvania might just be the boxcar capital of America, or at least one of them. And in addition to everything that I just said, Always be on the lookout for historic fallen flag logos and liveries which still grace some cars, even decades after a particular company has disappeared.